uh, not on the agenda because I failed to tell the clerk to to do so is a discussion by FIF and the K1 Center. So I ask uh, these representatives of FIF to come up, Vicki, Amy, Ashley, whomever is going to come up. And can we, uh, can sit we, down. Can we get you another? I can sit over here if that's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's fine. We've been already played musical chairs a few times. That's right. This evening. Hi. All right. With your permission, I'll begin. Sure. I'm Vicki Bailey. I'm a former principal at Fairhope K-1 Center and the founder of Fairhope Educational Enrichment Foundation. Yay. My dear love, both things, K-1 Center as well. And um, as I've said in our notes for you here, the purpose of our presentation is mainly to educate you and to update you um, regarding a potential partnership with FIF and the city in a purchase of the Fairhope K-1 Center property at 100 South Church Street. My um, part of this um, discussion is, or, or update is to tell you a little bit about the history of the building so far since you're a new council and I've shared some of that with you. Um, in, in past committees that I've served on, even prior to me moving as Director of Instruction to Eufaula, uh, before I moved back, I served on some committees for um, possibly to revitalize for purchase of the um, building. And mainly, the, the same subject rings true, and that's the performing arts, fine arts, uh, the arts. Those are the main ideas or ideals involved there. Science, technology, all of that. Leasing uh, rooms to musicians, artists, to help uh, part of the payment or the payments or the financing, to defer the financing of the building. Um, in one, there actually did state, it was stated there would be a request to lease the building for one dollar per year. And with that said, I went to, um, after, after going over this history, I attended a presentation with, uh, that, that Thief made at the library regarding the um, STEAM project that would be part of that camp, the new enrichment campus. She has a rendering of that again. Uh, with our conversation, people were saying, well, how do we go about moving forward? What are steps to move forward? Um, Amy and I discussed having a meeting, and, and because of my continued contacts with the Board of Education and the superintendent, I arranged a meeting for FIF. Um, Ashley and Amy and I met with um, a representative of the board, Cecil Christenberry, and uh, Eddie Tyler, John Wilson, John Gray, who else was there? So was it. That's it? Okay. And in that discussion, we let them know we weren't, we were earnest in wanting to purchase the building. And we would love for the plan to be that the city and we purchase together. I say we, uh, I feel like I'm but I'm trying to pull, really pull everybody together to help this partnership come to be because I would love to save the school and the historic value as well. Um, they have such a wonderful project and, and the, the beauty and value of the field trip downtown is what we, tr we hit home with, uh, with the Board of Education. Don't scare me. I thought you were coming to fuss. <laughs> Somebody. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> no, no. Um, anyway, we've met with them. We've discussed the purchase of the the building. We have pr they informed us that right now that it can't be purchased as such, and there are several. There are really three steps that must be taken before. But they really did want to us to look at purchasing the building for the appraised value. Appraised value, market value. I researched that further. I called the tax assessor, talked with him. Um, I have a copy of the appraised value. 
the and, and I'm on to the uh, next update of the appraisal the appraisal as you see the date I've listed is July 20th 2016 because we were considering getting a new appraisal to see if that was an accurate appraisal we were encouraged not to do that because of the date and what the proposed value would be now would probably be a lot greater so we did not do that and uh, with that said, the, I talked to them about a lease. They said they have researched that too, and it is against the law to lease for the, the dollar, the request. That was another request that had been in a former, in a former proposal, not this one. So we let, left the meeting with the uh, thought of a plan, creating a plan and steps. I called John Wilson and have communicated with him through the superintendent to get exactly when it will be available for purchase and what we do at that time, we being thief at this point, and possibly partnering with the city, the two entities. And in an email, he explained to me the following. He said that the, the board has to do their due diligence, and this is with the attorney who was copied on this before they can even, we can take any official action for the property. And he summarized the steps as follows. The first step is that we, that's the Board of Education, have to receive the survey results. They are expecting them any day, now any minute. I talked to Cecil prior to coming to this meeting. And he said it's not in hand yet, but they think it will be before Christmas. Um, anyway, it, sta it states the title and ownership by the state and current ownership by the county. And then the second step is this, that the board has to take before we can do anything. The second step is that the county board has to pass a resolution recommending the sale of the property. So that's the second step they have to take. And then the third step is that resolution has to be included in a certificate to the state superintendent of education to request that the sale of that school property take place. So see, it's not ready to be on an auction block yet. And they, they, they told us that in the meeting. They, were, they said, it's not. And, and the fourth step is the request has to be approved by the state superintendent and the governor before they can do anything. You may know that already. You may have known that. But this is new to John Wilson. He has um, the attorneys. He said this is a process that he has not, you know, this is the first time that they're going through this. And that he, they have been told that this is the way it, it, it has to go. The second part we said is, well, you know, we were ready possibly with a, a contract so that it wouldn't be auctioned. There is there is not that intent with the intent if you have a I'm, I'm, reword, I'm wording this wrong if you have a potential buyer at fair market value or appraised value which could be negotiated and the reason it could be negotiated there's a piece of land that is not usable and you all probably know where that is the gully and the tax assessor's office has given you the exact amount of acreage that is, which possibly could be deducted from the price. I don't know. Um, that would be for you all to decide or us to decide later on down the line. But um, it could be negotiated. And if they have someone willing and ready to purchase the property, it would not be auctioned. Would not have to be. And there's nowhere that says that it has to be. Um, so that is pretty much our due diligence on the, the request to purchase the property. We've had a lot of good discussions with the board, um, and I think FIF, I think there were some potential hard feelings from superintendent and board thinking that, you know, tugging and pulling about some things, and after everything, the air was cleared in the room, they understood that we were earnest. We weren't ready to run out and start another school system if we didn't get our way. That is not what we're about here. We're about creating an enrichment for the children and, re and preserving a building. And that's pretty much the reason we're here, to see if that 
potential partnership might be available to us. And then Ashley is going to answer any questions about the possible uh, STEAM project, if some of you haven't uh, been made aware of that. I'd like for you to ask the Board of Education these questions. Okay. Uh, have there been any schools in this state of Alabama that have been given to municipalities um, far less than market value or, or even leased to <coughs> municipalities? Okay. I think that's a fair question. I they're saying too. that they have to do this and have to do that. Um, you know, it seems to me that we're leasing. Uh, do you know offhand, Mayor, what we're leasing that park for across the street? That's like a dollar. A dollar. Over 30 years. <coughs> a dollar for a year. So is that market value? Because I'll give $10 a year mm -hmm. if I get to have that property. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things before y'all get into other um, parts of this um, agenda is, and when we talked, I explained this to you, there needs to be, you know, right now the city takes on a lot of responsibility from you know buildings that are you know as far as sustainability mm -hmm. and I agree that a partnership would be good just because you're bringing a lot of stakeholders to the table to make it sustainable um, but you know the library did a fundraiser the building was paid for but the city still subsidizes it over a million dollars a year and you know there with, with each building that we kind of partner with there's a lot of expenses that go into mm -hmm. this and mm -hmm. so I do think a sustainability study but you know talking about and I've mentioned it to y'all too to the councilman that you know consolidating some of our city services is important because it would consolidate our administrative and we are kind of discombobulated as far as our city services being some with public work some at Nick Center um, of course you're not going to change the, the sewer plant but you know we're in a grocery store and you know there's just things the city needs too we need a um, we need a court a, a good court you know everything can be built to suit and I think there's a lot of opportunity that because the K1 Center mm -hmm. is happening right now could happen sooner rather than later um, we do need to understand that the sale of this property though the money is going to be spent on the new schools that are going to be built mm -hmm. in our and feeder we, pattern and we remodeled. did make that clear too when yeah. we talked to them that we would expect and they said it would to put it we would put it in a contract that it, that all the any funding uh any purchase price would go and be for only fair the high high schools and stay oh, in yeah. that feeder pattern yeah they're going to yes. do that because yes. the, the the purpose of selling this property is to create two k6s right into well. our intermediate and elementary and we want that because it's, it's good for our schools um, so when I say stakeholders that could come to the table with this property you have to understand that the property also includes um, the park like you said we should take care of that now when we're talking to Baldwin County Board of Education the alternative school you know that's a gateway to a community that's not in inside the city the uh, Nick Center uh, property is on the land that Baldwin County Board of Education owns and now they're expanding mm -hmm. you know the elementary school to a K-6 these are all things to talk about in one conversation because we'll be in the same position in 30 years with the park across the street what if they want it back and they feel like that's valuable property exactly. I, I don't think we we stop at the k1 center it is every property right now including the nick center again because we should look at all of our facilities we, we shouldn't be in the building business you know i think we could consolidate a lot of our services into one but you have the court um possibly fairhope single tax they're in downtown which to me is suited for retail they might want to be a part of this um, of course FIF um, the USA is here in this building so in five years when their lease is up what are they going to do you know they might want to contribute to a build out or at least pay more rent than a dollar a year that was you know these are the things that I think you have that what if meeting it's, it starts with mm -hmm. this but then just talk about and brainstorm with 
everybody that might want to be a part of this uh -huh. and I think that would be really exciting mm -hmm. and make it sustainable like I said that's that's the main thing is we, we have to especially with an important property like this when we're looking at the CBD and our traffic and parking and the engineer that came to town they said that residential moving into municipal and then downtown is a perfect transition and um, that's what you would be creating there uh, but making it walkable and, and that study is happening right now so it's mm -hmm. there's just so much opportunity and I think everybody can have what they want instead of you paying for it or fee paying for it I do think it could be acquired with some of the assets we already own without coming out of pocket for the city we want that money to go to making our schools better so it's I don't want to come to the table anymore and I was you know an advocate for this I want to lease it for a dollar a year the reality is I want that money to go into our schools and it would go into our schools well and so. if you've had a financing um, you know depending on what the, the I, I think that you wouldn't even have to finance it well yeah. from what that appraisal is it's low, uh, what it would be it would be a, a really good purchase price I would think right I, and I'm not denying that I'm just saying that we evaluate council all of our assets and see if this is a priority and this is something that can happen now I don't think you have to borrow money you can mm -hmm. potentially sell other assets that you're not using that money goes into our schools we get the alternative school the k1 center we negotiate so it's off of our books completely or at least at least the park and the Nick center so what is it you want us to ask the Board of Education well that's what I'm saying to me it is a bigger conversation we, we know what FIFA wants we want that because it would be a huge asset to our city now it's really the city discussing with the, the Baldwin County Board of, Educa of Education what the possibilities are with all the assets it, to me it's a bigger conversation but knowing mm -hmm. that y'all want to do this and we're going to include this Mayor, in that I, don't, picture. I don't disagree with you but but given the I guess the the K1 center and the sensitivity of that property in the city of Fairhope and as close as I feel that we are in transferring that property to the city I would hate to see us step back and try to get and I don't disagree with you on the next property in the in the park and getting all this done in, in one deal to me the, the sensitivity of the K1 center is paramount to, to try to get it get that done and then go into the conversation on the other properties I, I have been discussing this with them and they do want to look at the bigger picture Baldwin County Board of Education so um, the alternative school to me do doing it in the future when that property could be unaffordable you know right now is the time to talk about it because they're not even thinking about that but they do want money because they're investing in the pay-as-you-go yeah. program so um, it's a huge opportunity for Fairhope, the city of Fairhope. I'm just a little curious. What would you foresee the park becoming? I, the it park wouldn't become much. anything. But what you do is you don't wait 30 years. Yeah. And when that's up, and then say, well, this is a valuable piece of property, just like the K1 Center. And mm -hmm. now we think we need this to use the money for something else. I'm saying, let's not go through that anymore with uh -huh. the Nick Center, the alternative school, and the park let's take care of it all now mm -hmm. one other thing I, I just That's good. you know would like for you to ask uh, and this, this is going to not come as a surprise to you is just ask the Board of Education if you meet with them if there's a possibility that they can consider our current contributions to the schools as some sort of payment and in recognition of the 350,000 cash we give them now plus the 550,000 in in-kind services and I know the argument will be well you're just trying to have this your conversation schools. with them I, I know that they will but I, I still think it's a fair question to ask them if that has any value or could be leveraged in that in that purchase again I'm just going to say this just because I've had multiple meetings and I've invited you but you were busy this I was of that argument too but if we 
if they don't sell this and don't use the money for the K6s, then we don't get those schools. So we're taking, and, and, and what I'm looking at, again, I didn't know this was on the agenda, so, so I'm not prepared. they don't the school and they don't get $3 million, they're not going to build the schools? Is that what they say? They're saying? using this money to build the schools. This well, is part the of the pay as you go. Yeah, regardless. Is, they've got the facilities, yeah. though, to do Well, it. I'm just saying that that money is going to our schools. If we if that money doesn't then that's just the 3.1 million or whatever it is yeah. it's not going to go to our school so if we're looking at other property potential we could look at that the triangle money. or something else that we're never going to probably do anything with and purchase everything and those funds will go to our schools which is what we really want well, I was just hoping to get some kind of credit for what we've been giving Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Yeah. But and I think that, mm -hmm. you know, Daphne does, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Spanish Fort, you know, there's a, a lot of the more, you know, the, the cities that have higher property values, they all contribute to the schools. And we don't want to not continue that. In fact, we want to increase No, and it. I'm not saying we, 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 we threaten them with that right. or threaten to withhold them. That's not wise. But I'm just saying that it is a fair question to ask right. them if Certainly. we could be I am negotiating with base. But it is just money that wouldn't go to our schools. Right. Right. But it's it, not like we're but, taking it yeah. away. If there's $600,000 that we're doing in in-kind services, a portion of that we're doing just because we're fair hope and we want to maintain a certain level. And there's a portion that we're doing that they would have to do otherwise. So there's probably a little bit of I negotiation think, well, wiggle room in there. The history when Fairhope built the municipal stadium, that was intentional. That was initially going to be leased to the board, to the board of education, to use uh, for sporting events. And we, you know, uh, over time, we got to where we didn't charge them for the stadium. And then, and then, oh, let's. Then we threw in free electricity. I mean, then they were supposed to pay the utility bill. So it, over time, uh, we've just taken on more and more of that uh, to the point where we have probably <coughs> multiple employees taking care of facilities that are largely used by Board of Education. I just think that should be considered. And, and I think having it as part of a larger conversation is good, but I think we do need to move on this particular piece, of, especially if they're in the position that they're willing to, to take these next steps to move forward. I would hate to we see that get away from us. Ways. I mean, we do. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're ready. They and they absolutely want to work with us. us. Yeah. yeah. Well, and what we want to do is make sure that we're all on the same page and presenting a united front so that we can approach the you know board of education and say you know this is what fair hope wants to do not just what FIFA wants to do or the city council but what we collectively can do yeah. together but what the city does have to recognize is that if it's not something we're going to participate into with maybe consolidating our services or having a presence then the feasibility has to be is there going to be a subsidy required long term? That's the reality. Could and the way you do, you know you prevent that is by bringing more things to the table, more stakeholders, because that's how you make it more sustainable. If if the if the funds stay within our feeder pattern, if we were to purchase this for you know the appraised value, the funds stay within our feeder pattern. If we were to finance this debt, could we reallocate the contribution? To the EAC to service this debt, and then we've essentially pre-funded the EAC. I mean, pre-funded that by that amount. Are you, have you talked to the principals about that? <laughs> well, I mean, that's it's the, the same, same thing. I know you're just moving right. it on a spreadsheet. You just, know, you're, you're, you're paying it all it. forward. It, at least the way I'm, I'm thinking of this, you're paying it forward at once, and then you're just rerouting that money to to pay it back. To pay, to pay it back, though, instead of giving money to the schools. But you've no, you already given the money to the school by school. buying the property and keeping it within the feeder pattern. No, no, I'm talking about the appropriation. Are you talking about what the city gives? Well, what I'm saying is, so if we buy it, the city's that money is going to then stay, in, as, as we've been told, within the feeder pattern. That's a big lump sum that's the equivalent of if we were to go ahead and prepay eight or ten years of EAC contributions. No, it's not the same. It's not the same money. This money from EAC is used totally differently than what this money that's going to be used from the sale of this property. It probably would be bricks and mortar, and it yeah. is well, totally what, different. The way I understood it, the I money think. from the school goes to buildings. 
Right, yes. that's so what I'm money saying. Going to the EAC yeah. goes to Absolutely. Yes. programs, so curriculum, um, mm -hmm. curriculums, okay. this type of they thing. So two it's two different, different yes. expenditures. Uh, I don't know if that's totally using. true because I've been told that yeah. just because we, if the city purchases that property, the city of Fairhope doesn't get pulled out of the pay as you go program. We're still in in the rotation, and it's just that that faster because we that money is put back into the Fairhope schools. So it's not. It's not. We're now. No we bought this now. We're no longer getting the funds from the pay as you go with the county. We're still in that rotation, you know, with the K six. But that uh, money that is that they get from the K one purchase cannot go into our classrooms like the money that we appropriate to the schools as a city. I would maybe disagree with you a little bit, you know, because it will go towards you know in the enrichment, the you know the uh, math instructors and the uh, reading. You think think we, so. It doesn't. Leave. We would ask that question. I it, think it, that would be the question to ask. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little window in all of this, you know, because I know you're it. just starting the conversation. But I, I was in agreement with her in the fact that the way somewhere. I understood it, it was going towards brick and mortar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it is. <clears throat> now, whether or not it does in the long run, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. You know, we're just starting at the very beginning of this, but that's my understanding yeah. right now. Well, put put it in perspective, just on that. You know, will it or will it not? At, even if even if it was purchased at 3.1 million, that's less than one percent of their operational cost for an entire year. Mm -hmm. Their 350 I mean, million dollar budget. Um, well, that's true too. So I mean, something that could alter the landscape of Fairhope forever is less than one percent of their budget. That's kind of scary. It is, and they could. I won't even want to say what I, my thought is. It's, it's worth. <laughs> It's priceless to us, though, it and I is. think that if we come together with everything we can do as a city, you can't put a value on that. You're right. I mean, forget what they're going to do. It's about what we're going to do, and it is priceless. What we hope to do. Absolutely. Then it seems like it's in our favor or in our best interest to try to consider acquiring the property before we even have the full range plan of what right. we're going to do. Doesn't matter what we do. I with think it. that we know that. The steam is is a is something we're interested in for that particular uh, section y'all are asking for, but the rest of the property I think would be in our best interest to acquire it if we can in advance of having the full range plan because I don't know that we'll have the time to really vet that prior to when this window may may close on us. Right, and they think that they will have all of this. Uh, John Wilson thinks as far as resolutions and all. Maybe end of January. You uh, refer to February. one through four. One through four. <coughs> they have to to ready to. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, we need to move along in the conversation. What was next in this? Uh, it, it was simply to answer any questions. questions. I think most of you have seen the presentation. So, if you did want to know more about the proposed steam center and what uh, what fees portion of it would be, is to give you that kind of. Can you get? Will you give us a two minute summary of that again, sure. please? So, as you're probably aware, there are you four outbuildings the on the property. Yeah, I'll see it again. I've seen it, but it's been a while. And the proposal is to use those for the steam enrichment center for classrooms, um, designed in such a way as that they are um, quite yeah, flexible, so you can essentially turn them out. into what, what yeah, Rebecca, yeah, our, our architect, calls a 3D classroom. There we go. I'll do it like so this. you've got All right. you know, living Man, walls. So you may be there. Um, <laughs> you may be there a while. <laughs> Okay. And also to oh, yeah. to restructure, yeah. <laughs> restructure the grounds so that the pelican's nest is more of a visual focal point, and that it it then works well within uh, the four buildings. <coughs> and this would be both for students' use in Fairhope and throughout the county, but also to attract the community um, to engage the community more directly with what's happening in classrooms, what the children are accomplishing. It would be available K-12. Um, FEE has been investigating, um, working with a STEAM director that would work among all of the five schools to help coordinate programs. And we've been de talking with the principals for years about this now. And they and their teachers have been involved in all of the planning. And Ashley, this came up in our meeting with them uh, regarding the, the actual facility, going to a facility versus being in the classrooms, rotating to a class, and how much more profound it is when you go to the field trip, uh, the facility on a field trip, 
you walk to the bay, you come back and you explore what you've collected at the bay, and you, you actually experience the entire, um, the entire process. And it's modeled on them. the pelican's nest. Uh, the pelican's nest, which is a field trip, and, and mm -hmm. it's proximity to the bay, mm -hmm. and um, it's also proximity to downtown. Many of the school groups that come use this as a full day, and they go to the museum, and they go to Jean's Beans, and it really is a, a community-wide, for them, experience. And um, so this is not in any way to exclude the possibility of more comprehensive science labs right. or steam centers on each campus. Right. No. That would, mm -mm. This is to to be as as FIF was founded. This is enrichment, and particularly not only that the the experience of going to the bay and the um, for some children the only time they ever see the water. Not only are there benefits to its being the, the field trip and and. Um, Casey, particularly the director of the Pelican's Nest, can argue for that um, quite effectively. But again, yes. if, if we look at our recent history um, in, in voting to support the school system, we clearly have a, a severe disconnect between those of us who understand the value and who regularly experience the strength of our school system and those who don't. And by maintaining everything on a school campus, we will never engage those people. They will never see it. The so retirees. By, yeah, well. Um, so if you don't have a reason to be in a school, you won't be. And um, by putting it in the heart of Fairhope at this historic and you know, with building with a lot of emotional investment for the community, it automatically engages people. I can see a, an art walk including you know, people from the community and there's the moon buggy and there the artwork that the children have done and your science experiments and it, it will showcase the strength of our school system in a way that is not possible by having everything siloed within an educational building. I think it's, it's all very positive. <laughs> Excuse me. And, the, and in that, they were very, the question came up, does, is this for every student in Baldwin County? And we said it always it has is. been. Right. Of course it yes. is. I just want to point out, though, that STEAM does have to be in the schools because there's no way to bus yeah, this is every not, kid no, no, no. Well, to the facility. That's part that, of why we have the STEAM director <coughs> right. who begins Absolutely. before there's even a building. Well, I wanted you to um, point that out, too, yeah, because the, that's something that Baldwin County Board of Education they're yeah. not going to contribute to this, even though it's going to benefit our students. It's not Actually, something they, they, said they, they would. They yeah. would. Yeah. In our discussion with them, one of the things that they said was that if, you know, we can get things together and get the STEAM Center going, that they would support us with personnel. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. will supply us with we ask an educator. We ask that specifically. Getting all of the students there. I mean, just all of these things, I just think we, we should look at it as a feasibility study to make sure how we can bring other things so it pays for itself. I mean, if the city well, was we're rolling only discussing in the dough, those four buildings, right? Yeah. right? And what happens to the larger portion of the property um, we can certainly contribute to, but that's not an inherent part of what we're proposing. So I think there are there's sustainability models for the larger building right. that would help pay the for arts the, that's that's the exactly entire property. Right. That's and again, I think it, the it's a, it's a, yeah. all of yeah. it a benefit and that's to the community. How it makes everything work. But when you think about yeah. wanting steam in the classroom and, and that one field trip you know, obviously isn't sufficient what we can do in those classrooms by having a STEAM coordinator who works among all five schools and allows for team teaching from one school to the next, which is something that we have a dearth of at the moment. You know, uh, we met with John Cardwell just last week and he was talking about how um, there's a different math method of teaching math at three different schools and so by the time the children get to high school they've all learned it differently and you have to do some reteaching. There should be mm -hmm. continuity yeah, curriculum right. from K-12. And, and this will help ensure that and it can also in a sense be an incubator program where you can beta test certain programs, certain methods of teaching, certain subjects and so what happens with the the STEAM director can then be disseminated into the classrooms with the other teachers because you've tested it, you've worked with it, and then over the summer, because this, this facility will be available year round, over the summer then you are able to do your own professional development. So here we've done a year of this 
with our field trips. We know this works. We know what it costs. We know what materials we need. So then you spend the summer teaching teachers how to teach STEAM. And so it's inherently supportive of STEAM in the classroom because it's going to be essentially where you, where you test and then disseminate. I'm a fan. <laughs> All I think about is long-term sustainability, and I agree. I just think it just needs more information. It doesn't prevent us from moving forward on something, but will it look exactly like this? Those are things we have to look at for sustainability, that's all. Y'all, Council, do you have any questions for any of these ladies? No. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Appreciate thank you. It. And we were interested. Who do we get back to with the answers? Uh, uh, Clark. Yep. Clark, and Clark, and let's give it to the city clerk. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, entertainment district discussion. Council, um, we've had a lot of uh, members of the business community revive this discussion. I'll give you a quick background. Uh, probably a year and a half ago, or maybe more, this was brought up. Uh, ordinance was crafted. Um, arguments for both sides of, of the establishment of an entertainment district were given. Uh, the elections came in 2016 in the fall, and basically the council just kind of punted to the, to, the, to the new council. And we have not taken this up yet. But recent events uh, have, have uh, put a sense of urgency upon uh, some members of our community to, to revive the conversation. So the reason that I put it on the work session and the council agenda, it, it was several reasons. Uh, I thought that we needed an opportunity to discuss any, anything, if any changes needed to be made to how it was written. Uh, I wasn't certain uh, as to how much interest there was from the council, so that needed to be discussed. Uh, and then if we, if we wanted to move forward with it on the agenda, we could make changes in the work session and then introduce the ordinance because it hasn't been introduced. We could introduce it in the regular meeting uh, according to the changes. Or uh, if you do not uh, uh, want to make changes, you don't have to do so. And another option is that you may not want to consider it, so it doesn't even have to be introduced mm -hmm. tonight. But in fairness to everybody, uh, I put it on both places. Now, there's been a lot of talk in town about people walking around the streets and, and drinking. Well, first, let me say that in open, we have an open container law, so if you're a citizen walking down the street with, with uh, uh, a drink in your hand, it's against the city of Fairhope's laws. Uh, that has not been... Uh, enforced uh, to my knowledge for a long time where the entertainment district comes into play is for those licensees licensed sellers of alcoholic beverages so if you're at the art center and they're serving wine and you walk out of there and walk down the street because they're not selling it they're not licensed seller the, the ABC board doesn't get involved. The ABC gets involved in is if you are a licensed seller of alcohol and someone leaves your establishment or if you violate one of their other laws. So that's been one of the, the misconceptions about this. Uh, it, it's up to the Fairhope Police Department to enforce um, the open container law. It's up to the ABC board to enforce people leaving licensed establishments. So if you leave, if you leave any establishment that's not licensed, uh, in downtown during any event, or if you walk in, up downtown with a drink you brought from home, that that's not governed by the ABC board. They're they're not looking at that. Uh, you know, having said that, uh, some people think that it's hypocritical that um, we allow these businesses to be fined when someone walks out of a, a business, but then we don't care if somebody walks out of a business that's not licensed to sell it, and they walk out of. Uh, and a style of, you know any any store if they're not selling it and walk down the street so that's a little bit of a background uh, I wanted to point out to you uh, if you look under um, uh, item six and just some things that we, we need to discuss tonight is uh, under section one there is uh, what's referred to as exhibit a and if you look at exhibit a this was where we were in the fall of 2016 in drawing the lines around the entertainment district 
our CBD has changed some uh, most recently. Uh, if you'll notice, if you can look in your book, uh, it goes, it carves out the K-1 Center. You see how it goes around the park there across the street from the K-1 Center? It excludes that. Uh, and, then it, and then as it meanders uh, by Faulkner, our community, Coastal Community College now, it encompasses the amphitheater but carves out the main campus. And the idea behind that was to um, exclude classrooms and, and school rooms uh, that are of use. But then uh, you, the, the amphitheater was included. Now they could exclude it. The school could exclude alcoholic beverages, but that, that would be up to them. So those are some things as you look at this Exhibit A, we might want to reduce those lines or extend those lines. Uh, I've also been asked to consider the pier area. It's been called the Main Street of Fairhope. People have said, well, why wouldn't you include the pier if that's Main Street Fairhope? Uh, I've had people mention to me Henry George Park. Uh, I've, I've personally witnessed during certain events down there, people literally have tables with tablecloths and a whole selection of wine on the table. Well, that's illegal in the city, but it hasn't been enforced. Um, what this would do, if it extended to that uh, area, would be make legal what people are doing now. Chief Pettis, I see you back there, and I, I also uh, heard from one concerned person that uh, the police department was concerned about the enforcement of this uh, ordinance. I actually think it makes enforcement easier because you don't have to challenge somebody because if it's legal, you don't, you know, if they're walking down the street with a non-breakable cup and it's got a beverage in it, you don't have to enforce the law. But I mean, you can give me a different slant on it if you wish. Well, that that is true. But also it's true when you get alcohol and so much alcohol, it creates a lot of problems like what Mobile has in their downtown district. As most people know, I don't drink. So people think that I have a thing against drinking. I have friends that drink. As long as they drink sociable, we can have dinner and stuff. But if they get to getting out of hand, I leave okay. because alcohol does cause problems. <clears throat> um, one of the things you had said was that it hadn't been enforced. And one of the reasons it hadn't been enforced because like a lot of the events we have downtown, like the first Friday and stuff, and for years I've asked, I asked the previous mayor if he would put it, when we put it out for Mardi Gras and stuff like that, if we would let him know that this is a family social thing for Mardi Gras and different things like that so people wouldn't be like they were in, on Berber Street or in Mobile with alcohol. And so, you know, we do what y'all decide. If y'all decide for the entertainment district, we will enforce the rules and regulation. But um, one of the things I, I would caution against really is to peer because we have had people come from different places to see the sun rise in the morning the sun uh, the moon come up at night and I personally have caught people down there in stolen vehicles with the little red solo cups drinking and a lot of stuff going on over the years when I was patrolling and so you know you get that close to the water and stuff and we're going to with the entertainment district, I, I feel like that we're going to get a new breed of crowd to come into town. Yes, we like people to come to Fairhope, and we want them to enjoy it. When I go places, I tell them about Fairhope, but I don't want it to get to the place to where it's where the drunks hang out because it caused problems for me. Thanks for that clarification. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Council, let's see. Going back to that... Uh, so then if you, uh, so I'm just putting, I'm just putting the arguments out there. Um, the, uh, if you notice section three, it says if someone uh, is to leave an establishment that's licensed to sell alcoholic beverages, they would be required to uh, place them in shatterproof cups that could be approved and purchased through Fairhope Downtown Business Association, or uh, that could also be through City of Fairhope. And that was discussed in the past to probably be in paper cups, something that's going to degrade pretty quickly. If you make them out of like stadium, plastic stadium cups, they can be used for years. And 
uh, you know, people can bring them from home and they're really not leaving a place and look like they left a place. So you'd want something that didn't last very long. Um, section um, six, uh, it was written, once again, this was never adopted, that it would be in effect 365 days a year. Uh, I think the uh, argument made there was that if you just limit it to weekends, there's not that much business during the week. Uh, but I've heard both sides. Some people say only special events, holidays, uh, city events, such as First Friday. So uh, if you're going to entertain this notion, I'm just trying to put the options that you might want to consider A, B, C, and D. Um, of course, you do have the option to not consider any of these, and, and we, can, uh, we can move on without further discussion. Um, so that being said, uh, I'll open the floor to, to discussion by anyone. Well, I support it, but limited to um, special events. I just don't think 365 days a year that we want to want to open up this this Pandora's box. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to turn into New Orleans, but I am. I, I just think I think you limit it to <laughs> First Friday Art Walk. You limit it to I'll say it in a minute. Some uh, some other special events, some parades, and and I think that we can determine what those events are or people can apply for a special event designation you know when they bring their event forward for permitting but I, i'd limit it to that okay any other comments on any of the other yeah. um I, I would maybe draw the line to map the uh, cbd boundary and if the boundary grows and extends you know to so even if that includes inside. a school property well no, i guess you don't need that so <clears throat> but you can still not. follow the cbd and, and carve out i mean i don't if it's special events and you know, people are gonna be stumbling down the classroom i mean i don't understand what the the theory behind carving out faulkner is <laughs> well i think it was trying just to keep people from walking through there with alcoholic beverages just trying to keep the sanctity of the Reduce school. the litter and things like that. You, you know, uh, I'm sorry, Robert, go ahead. Yeah, to me, the, I mean, this entertainment district is basically just allowing what is happening to happen legally without the ABC <coughs> breaking down the the restaurants and the, and the bars. You know, the people can leave without the owners being harassed. Uh, like you said, it's, it's been going on. People have been bringing their coolers or whatever else downtown chief uh as far as public drunkenness or, or rowdiness during mardi gras or other you know art walk is it is there an issue currently with with people getting out of hand and i'm not i'm not saying never happens but is it we we, we have had a couple of incidents at mardi gras but none lately um art walk is we're getting a bigger crowd now uh to art walk but it's not we we see people you know walk around with a bottle of beer we just tell back and pull it out but uh we, it's it's not out of hand but we don't want it to get there oh i agree with you you know wholeheartedly you know we want to keep keep the character downtown fair but I, I just don't think making this entertainment district is going to change that character i could be wrong then we can repeal it but well what about i mean i did i'm still stick with my opinion of, of limited to special events and i'd maybe even consider wanting to put a cap on uh the time for that 10 p.m 11 p.m i mean well i think the later also, you get into the night the the more problems you're going to have i, I think that's also that. covered by current uh ordinances on the books they can't serve past a certain time that right but i'm saying i'd cut it off yeah. earlier than that because that's 2 a.m i'd say 10 p.m 11 p.m somewhere <clears throat> where most of these events would be wrapped up yeah so they're you're not allowed you're not encouraging them to, to walk around and down and walk around one, yeah All yeah right. i mean I, you know i i truly don't know how I, I i feel about this i feel pretty confident that that i i, I am against the idea of it being 365 days a year um you know we got a lot of feedback through email today and people reaching out to me on the phone i was in the car all day and it's pretty split, uh, it seems. And you get some variation of opinion. Some people that don't want any drinking in Fairhope at all. You got some people that you know think it should be 365, you know, for for businesses who who, who sell alcohol. Uh, you, you know, I, I don't really know. Um, you, you know, you just got to be careful with these things because even you know we're sitting in here in a room 
with, with good intentions of the way we envision this thing working out. Um, if everybody does it the way we're intending them to do it, it will work out great. Doesn't always, people don't, don't always do what you are expecting or hoping that they will do. And so I just, you know, I, I worry about that just because I'm a worrier by nature, um, chicken little. Um, but, you know, those are just things that I think we have to keep in mind. But, but I think there's arguments for and against that I really do. Uh, but, but I do think the one thing I feel strongly about at this point is that I'm not comfortable with it being 365. I think the problems come in when we're busy downtown. I mean, my store serves alcohol. It's monitoring it when you're busy. And I think if, if restaurants are having problem now, problems now, monitoring it and getting fined, that's a reality. It's more expensive and, and people are doing it. It's just hard to monitor. I think if you do consider doing it, do it for special events and just to start it out. I mean, you're not, doesn't mean mm -hmm. you can't change it down the road. And, and but most special events end at eight. I don't know that you right. have to go to 11. I mean, you know, this is just um, my two cents. Robert, do you have an opinion on uh, days, events? Or? Yeah, I mean, the special events is fine with that. Okay. And I'd like, you know, the Central Business District just to <laughs> simple rather than carving mm -hmm. out different lines. And, uh, you know, we received an email from the lady at, I think it was Old Mercantile that is right there on the border. How does that work if your street in front of you is in it, but your building is not? Is that? They, they'd be included. I mean, if somebody walked out of that door, they're in the with an open container. They're in the, I mean, they're violating our city ordinance. If they're, they're not a licensed seller of alcohol, so they're not violating anything by the. ABC well, I got board. contacted by the art center, and if the art center holds a function that sells beverages, can they sell? Well, I guess I can't. They have to do tickets, yeah. So never mind. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I read. And then I'm against the cups, the special cups. I think that's a hassle that doesn't need to be. It would create a lot of trash, but but it also identifies if somebody really left that, uh, you know, um, restaurant. The, 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 the restaurant owners were people not around that. It. Yeah, I mean that's I'm sure that's they're just not unnecessary bureaucracy in my my opinion. A special cup. My problem with this whole thing is it, it just it behooves an environment that I don't think this city was uh, uh, quality of life, so to speak, is used to. And I don't I'm not in favor of any of it, to be quite honest with you. If you want to drink, drink inside the establishment just like you're supposed to. I'm not real big on walking around the streets with drinks in hands going from bar to bar. And I can f really foresee the problems, as the chief pointed out, that this escalated. I've never seen alcohol turn into a good thing, ever. And I don't see this point of having alcohol out on the streets of Fairhope as being a good thing at all. And I'm totally against it. Okay. Well, guys, if I'm hearing, I'm hearing two, four, one against, one kind of on the fence. Not really sure where you are, Jay, and, and I'm, I'm slightly in favor of it. So I guess that's the way of saying I'm in favor of it, as presented. Uh, with your changes, I, I could go along. I could compromise and go along with that. I might want to carve out those schools, but I guess if the school says you can't have alcohol here, they can make it illegal. Um, are you shaking your head yes on that? Yeah, it's a state. I mean, no, no alcohol on school grounds, yeah. Just don't have yeah. to carve it out. Yeah. Um, Robert, if you say no special cups, then what it, I mean, then you can just take a, take, what do you take out of the restaurant? Whatever the establishment has. No, no, whatever the <laughs> establishment has, whether it's a, you know, a solo cup or. Uh, I mean, not, no, nobody's, no, walking, no, nobody's walking around and bought one. No, no, no. Don't you should still leave He's just saying you're not going to have a, a fair hope. This is, Open my, this is my alcohol or whatever. Right. right. <laughs> well, then it gets it. How about a can of beer? A can's not breaking. <laughs> can's fine. <laughs> Don, Don glass container. This is my party cup. Uh, so in section five, so you're saying then um, you would. Um, section six is one of the Section things. three it says cups shall be, should be shatterproof. Cup should be approved. So get rid of that last sentence in section three. Yeah. And you're saying, you're saying exhibit A would be the CBD. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? 
Exhibit mm -hmm. A would just be our existing mm -hmm. yeah. CBD. Now, in that uh, for that place that you mentioned, are they? Does the CBD still exclude them? The new CBD? The Art Center? No, the Old Bay Mercantile. I would think they're in the CBD. I don't think it goes you know down. And the new CBD doesn't get voted on until January. I don't think it goes down. Well, what you could then say, and then the resolution should say, uh, which is concurrent with the CBD. And the yeah, CBD, we didn't, did CBD change yeah, this day concurrent with Right. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. this current map excludes uh, El Camino Taco Shack, too. You know, I would think this, that's part in the central business district, mm -hmm. so that would encapsulate that little alley as well. Um, uh, and we can look at that one. I don't think it does. Yeah. Look at this one. This one may be a little bit easier. That's the central it's business district. Aren't they right in here? That's the old one with some carve outs. Yeah, so they're in it. No, that's not it. That's not, yeah, that's it. You're going to have some enforcement okay. issues with number four as well. If you look at well, that's what I was just getting ready to talk about that. Right, right, right. Bring it up. If John Smith walks from North Church Street with a glass of wine from his house and stands next to his buddy who's drinking a glass of wine that bought it at a store, one of them is violating the law and the other one's not, and it's the same. To me, to me you haven't changed anything about as far as enforcement. Uh, or try to worry about helping the enforcement of this because all you're going to do first first of all you can't take if i go to one <coughs> establishment purchase a drink walk out go to another establishment i'm not allowed to take that drink into that establishment is right. that correct mm -hmm. so rather than turn the bouncer for lack of a better word to look inside to see who's coming out now you have to turn around to see who's outside coming in so you haven't changed anything in that direction and you haven't changed anything as far as enforcement because i can just you know Trunks of cars, backs of cars, whatever, all the alcohol in the world, just load them up and walk around town with it. Well, I going to know where you bought that thing. That's why, the, that's why the cups establishing where you got it. Well, again, even if you have hard. a cup, that's an enforcement. You have to enforce yeah. Yeah. that the, right. they've got the perfect, the right cup or the wrong cup or what have you. Well, you haven't would, changed a thing well, as far as I can see. What that would tell would to be. To help out anybody. If you're a bartender in bar A and you give and you give out yellow cups and somebody walks in with a pink cup that came from bar B, they, they see that and they say you can't come in here with that. That was that was the premise behind the cups. Well, again, that's the same thing as walking when you get busy, it's a little difficult to follow while they're in. I mean they may be in there a little bit or what have you. But again, I haven't seen any help in enforcement changing except turn it around and to enforce yeah. something else, all different. In my opinion. It's the same thing. But now you're allowing alcohol in the streets of Faro. I'm just not real in favor of that, no matter how you want to do it. If you want to enforce it during special events or do it during special, you know, these special events, that's one thing. But to do it all the time, to me, is just ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. We're not, nobody you're asking for a lot of trouble. All, nobody's in favor of doing it all the time. And you're saying we're allowing alcohol in the streets of Faro. There's already alcohol on the streets of Faro. Not all the time. Just during these special events, which yeah. you're all talking about. Yeah. Right. How would you define the special events? Give me the definition of that. I mean, I think you'd say anything. art walk. Um, Are you going to name every holiday event? I'm, I think you would <coughs> you'd name them all. So it's, or just say request it, which becomes a special event. If you, if you just well, if the leave it special they, don't, they don't have to request it if it's a, if it's a city sponsored event, such as lighting other trees, Christmas parade, or. I, I think you'd have to name each one yeah. specifically, or else people are going to say, "Well, this was a special, to me. special event to this to this group." Thur yeah. thur thur Thursdays in October are always special for me. So <laughs> that's why exactly. I think it's not to have it at all. I think you have I mean, to. You if you're going to say special events, I think you have to specify. I'm going to say city sponsored city special events. Okay, so then if you're at a Mardi Gras parade, which is not a city sponsored, no, event, I think I think you have to say what each event is. That we're going to okay. Right. I mean, may, it, maybe you can say city sponsored, but I think you have to go further and, than that. And I think you cut it off at nine or ten <laughs> or whatever, just to just so it's not all night. But you got twelve first Fridays. Hmm. Yep. Oh, you talking about time? Time. Time. Yeah. Ten p.m., nine p.m., whatever. Just because you're not wanting to encourage us. Just again, I keep bringing it in here. Pub crawl, you know. Enforcement again. Well, then you might as well not even have it. I think if you, if, you if the bar closes at two and you stop it at ten. Well, I'm thinking about it not from a, so everyone can just, <clears throat> I, I guess, I, mean, I see what you're saying. I'm thinking of it more from 
during the time that the event is going on and people are more apt to yeah. say, I'm inside this establishment, I bought a drink, I want to walk out and catch the Mardi Gras parade as it comes by. I'm not really wanting to see it. Hey, I'm here, it's 1.30 in the morning, and I want to walk around town over to here and leave with a drink. Like Mayor said, it's just turned up busy. Yeah. I mean, it, I think it's Peak because time. You're, you're downtown, like first Friday our walk, you might just bought a drink, but now you want to go down to another Correct. merchant. Um, Without that drink. <laughs> you can't walk in a merchant with the drink. It, 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 <laughs> it's, it's making no, it can't. so it's you can't like go in there, you can't. it's all one event. Yeah, I, I'll, I, I, mean, I can see that, but after <laughs> nine or ten, then it doesn't need to why continue. Would you be leaving with alcohol. Well, I mean, there's that's, nothing. That's my point. There's nothing good coming from just <laughs> just we need to have a special open bar hopping all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> well, well, what'd you say? A special, special call meeting. A special meeting for special events. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm, I'm trying to get it to a, a point where it could be introduced tonight. If not, that's exactly what's, where we're headed. No, you're good. Keep going on number three. Scratch the special cups. The, uh, okay. Number four. Yeah, like Marcus was saying, I'd scratch number four. I mean, that's just enforcing more. To me, I don't know what that does. Well, the other deal is, even if you have special cups, it doesn't mean you can't keep the cup, take it home with you, throw it in your car, leave it in the car, and then pour your drink in that special cup. That's just more bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah. So what you're That's saying on four is you're saying people can bring it from home then? People can walk oh. up the street, yeah. Until <laughs> let's see how the merchants handle it when nobody comes in to buy their drink. They bring all their own that's stuff. Right. That's, <laughs> right. that's what that's what I was thinking. That's, that's, not, lovely. that's not gonna happen. And, and there's people still coming in the bars, right? Well, I would say it would encourage it would encourage less drinking if we left number four in. If you you know if you if you concerned about what it's going to become, you know, uh, then again, if you're saying if it wasn't purchased inside of it, but what happens if it was given to you inside of it, right? Well, it does say non-purchased, right? Yes, if you bring one in, it was purchased somewhere, wasn't it? I thought we, you couldn't bring one in from another establishment. No, no, into the district. Uh, <coughs> not into a... Uh, so how do we have four and six? Are four and six not contrary to each other? I mean, I think six needs to be adjusted, but... I'd leave four in just to discourage it. Leave four, change six to special Leave four, events. change six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is Greer's in there? I'm sorry? Is the, the supermarket in there? Yeah, they're in there. So you can go load up at Greer's and just carry it anywhere you want to. Except into the establishment. Except for what? Into the establishment. Right. Yeah. But you, if you purchase it at Greer's, if you go to the ABC store and purchase a bottle of vodka versus... Greer's and buy the same bottle of vodka. The one you buy at Greer's is legal to walk around with an open container, but the one at the ABC store is not. Or your house, mm -hmm. that's correct. Right. right. Are these drinks or are they bottles <laughs> from. Amen, bro. Like, I think again, you can be specific. The <laughs> Maybe there's a quantity of You can't have it's a I mean, plastic like a bottle. Cup or a drink. Eight ounce. Not a six pack. Just put right. right. it in or an ounce. Greer's is not a service establishment to pour alcohol like that. You can't go in there and order a cocktail. I, I'm, look, I'm, read, I'm reading the, the reading that. Just to adjust but it. you can buy a solo so cup Greer's and a not. handle in Greer's and pour yourself a drink in the parking lot and um, walk around and do your thing. So would you make it, you know, establishments that are pouring drinks, or how would you change it? I don't know if Greer's is, is governed by the ABC when it comes to serving alcohol. They're a seller, they but they're not, not a server. What I'm, what I'm looking at is just the plain language of this, and you go he bought it in alcohol there. purchased in. And I'm looking, I'm thinking about my police officer going, 
okay, a guy's got a wagon with a load of vodka in it, and then another guy's got a wagon with a load a of vodka. Where'd you purchase that? Well, I got it at Greer's. You're okay. You can go. I'm going to arrest you for violating the city ordinance because you didn't buy it at Greer's. It's the same stuff. It's kind of... I think, I mean, I'm thinking of just what you you're, served during... You're thinking event. of everybody having it in a designated cup during well, these I've, events. Is that how you I'm not saying how you would do that. I think definitely plastic, whatever the establishment. But mm -hmm. their Greer's is not... They don't pour drinks you're for right. individual purposes. I don't know how you would... I, I think you like that would be an easy way to distinguish what establishment yeah they're not like to pour a beverage in Greer's to take out the door yeah for sale. I, I it's not purchased there but i think you're conceding marcus that people are going to come into the cbd with it from outside they're they're absolutely going to be doing that i mean it's just they're doing it now they're doing it now right. and they're going to continue to do it right. it's not going to change and that's not going to change see to me again you know, i'm worried about this enforcement the enforcement would be if you see an alcohol of beverage arrest them that's the easiest form. It's plain and simple. You don't have it outside the premises. If you got outside the premises, you got a problem. Otherwise, we're having to sit down rules on how you can take alcohol outside and get the police to understand how they can, who they can arrest and who they can't. But I think the problem now is that businesses are being affected because it's almost impossible to monitor during special events when people leave with a cup. Th those are the businesses that, that are being penalized. That That's the part we're trying to fix too. It's not just... Well, um, it's unfortunate it's that they are, but I'm not for penalizing the entire town for some businesses. That's my problem. I understand that some businesses <coughs> might have a problem during certain events, but I'm not for penalizing the whole town because, again, my statement on the... You know, this human nature being the way it is, you can figure, people are going to figure out more ways to get around this than Adam's house cat. And it's, uh, to me, it's just going to get bad, bad, bad for the city of Farrell. I, I don't see a good thing about it, period. Councilman Boone, I, I, I appreciate your position. And I know you're going to vote no, no matter what is proposed. And that's fine. I mean, and that's your right. But I think I hear a majority of council that's right. are probably going to get in favor. So <laughs> I right. got to get something to move along that, 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 um, so we can move forward with it. That's what I'm trying to trying to do. So do we need your objections are noted. No, no doubt. problem. Do we need to define what those special events would be? Yes. Okay. In advance, and we have to. Do yes, and, and yes. Well, there are. I'd say first Friday yeah. art walk, uh, Mardi Gras parades, lighting the trees, Christmas parade, uh, Christmas parade, um, arts and crafts. Isn't Christmas parade supposed to be about kids? Kind of family oriented. Everything in Fairhope is family friendly. I don't think you're changing these events. Yeah. I mean, they're, uh, Let's they're keep going. already. We, we did discuss that. One, one of the things I wanted to ask um, it come up was about start time and stop time because I know I, I bring New Orleans up a lot, but when they have football games at 12 o'clock, People start tailgating at 10, 8 or 9. When they have them at 7, 30, or 8 o'clock at night, people are drunk when they get there. So we we need to get a starting time for this and a cutoff time. We've been talking about the cutoff time, but if you can get a start time too, that would help. Two hours before an event to two hours after an event? Well, I'd say when it starts. starts. But they got to get there and get their chair. They got to get prepared. Uh, an hour before. About, to I'm, I'm, I'm thinking first Friday, I guess. Five to ten, five to nine. I mean, that'd be during the that encompass the beginning and the yeah. end of the event. Five to nine, ten. Five to yeah, five Whatever. to nine or five to ten. I'd say yeah. You can go early. You're gonna, you're gonna have trouble. Five ten. Okay. Arts and crafts starts what, at 10 a.m. Yeah, what you gonna do at arts and crafts? Mimosa well, said, maybe they just don't get to drink during the day. I don't know. Well, wander around. Well, they don't get to wander around, around during the day with drinks. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can pull arts and crafts out of the special events. I mean, you <coughs> say an hour before or after the close of the event. I, think when is, when is I just think it's easier to set a. I think it's easier to just set a set parameters that don't change that people can follow. I think five to five to ten to me. 
Be you reasonable. Gotta, but you gonna do uh, MMO water parade? You not gonna allow that? Uh, uh, people are all downtown, the streets are closed, but then you can't do it then? I don't know. I mean, I guess you can. There's a, too many can things that can be hour, exceptions. An hour before, an hour after. An hour. Well, you, you got to look at the the intent behind what you're doing. I mean, are we doing it because our businesses are being penalized uh, because it by the ABC board because it's hard to police during a special event, people coming in and out, or are you doing it to promote people having the ability to walk around with an alcoholic beverage in their hand? I mean, if, if you're doing it for the business side. Then it makes sense to have it just a just a, a deadline. It's five to nine only on special events. If you're doing it to promote people's ability to walk around with alcohol in their hand, then you make it specific to each event an hour before to two hours after. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I don't. I, I don't. I like the five to ten. You know, yeah, it just. I think that's just easier to easier to follow, easier to enforce. <laughs> Five to ten. <laughs> and? Nah. <laughs> Five to ten. What other events? That's always. I don't know. I, I think you're almost watering it down to the point where it's, it's pointless. Almost. You can always vote my way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Join the club, right? Spring fever. Mr. Kerr, I'm going to let you speak. I know you want to speak. Who, hey, me? Yeah. I need to stand up or just sit Yeah, there? come stand up. All right, check it out, guys. <laughs> you need your name and address, brother. My whole address? <laughs> Dragonfly Food Bars. I'm just know. messing with you. All right. This specifically for us as business guys, and I'm speaking for everybody that owns bars and restaurants that hold liquor licenses. This whole entire thing happened with the ABC board on the Christmas parade. They specifically said that they were targeting our businesses. Okay. I work very hard for the money that I get to make with my business. They get to pay taxes with and feed my child and my family with. It's not a brothel. It's nothing crazy that everybody thinks. Maybe you think this. I'm not sure. Simply enough, it's a very simple business. People come in. They buy a drink, they drink the drink, they go home, okay? Hopefully in a cab if they've had too many. Long short of it is with Entertainment District, if my business continues to get hit over and over, which they say they're gonna to continue to sting downtown Fairfax because we have a problem. I don't see that, I've been born and raised here, I've seen it happen, and it's plain and simple that if we can have a special event where my patrons can walk out in the street and the parade goes by, they see it go by, they catch their candy, whatever it is, they finish their beverage, and at 10 o'clock they have to go home, that's fine. I'm fine with that, and I literally sell more alcohol and food than almost every single other restaurant in Fairhope does. And I'm standing here by myself, there's no other restaurant people here besides me because I feel really passionately that this is going to be something that it's not going to turn into Bourbon Street. Bourbon Street has been like that since day one. It was founded on alcohol, prostitution, and drug abuse, period. That's New Orleans. It's not Fairhope. This is only going to keep us as business people having a peace of mind to know that we're not going to have to turn around at 8 o'clock and ABC kick the door in and run off, I'll put the number out, we lost about 560 bucks in sales on the Christmas parade night because people walked out because they got terrified and ran out on their tabs. 560 bucks for me might not be a whole lot for everybody else, but that pays for the liquor that I have to purchase in order to put back on the bar to feed the people the alcohol when they come in the door. So if this continues to happen, Fair Hope is not going to have a first Friday atmosphere. There's not going to be a parade atmosphere. It's basically just kind of wither away, and you may get your way, but the people like myself that survive off this business want to fight for it to get it to if we turn around we don't have to be like oh crap here comes the abc board again everybody act right and stand like this we do what we can the best that we can to our ability like the mayor said about policing the door if i'm to police my door during a special event i have four exits that means i have to have a 12 dollar hour employee at each exit watching the alcohol leave that location <clears throat> i can't do that i mean as a small business guy you can't hand out 400 something dollars every friday night or every special event to a door guy, it just doesn't work that way. So for us, it's more beneficial not to get people drunk and loaded and tear Fair Hope up or whatever it is. I love this town as much as everybody that's in this room. I was born and raised here, my name's on the sidewalk. But the long short is I wanna be able to turn around at the end of Friday night with my seven-year-old daughter in front of my establishment and my bartender not call me crying and say the ABC board's here threatening us with this, 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 and this. It's a very simple procedure. People walk in the door, 
There's already people drinking on the sidewalk anyway. I ran them off of my courtyard during the parade because they had their alcohol on my property. I pay for that license and I have to fight to keep that license every single day when the average citizen is going to make up their mind on what they do regardless of whether or not I sell them alcohol or not. So, you know, there's that. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. You're welcome. Well, actually, contrary to belief, I love an alcohol fuel environment. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> However, I do not drink. Now, why that's I, you know it, I don't drink either. That's I couldn't tell you, but I do I'm like it. I just, you know, don't drink alcohol, so I just prefer <laughs> not to have it. On the one hour before, one hour after. Yeah, I, well, I, I'm still five to ten, but it, yeah, and I'm not. I, I don't know whether I still okay, don't know whether yeah. I like it or not. But if I do like it, it's it's got to have a designated time. Well, the thing is, is what about the business owners that pour free alcohol and they're there all day long in their establishment with alcohol already? that don't have a liquor license, do you go in there and tell them they cannot pour their own alcohol until 5 o'clock? You see what I'm saying? So there has to be something that, you know, kind of includes everybody in this because if the, the regular businesses and retailers are allowed to give away a glass of wine, when do you tell them they can and cannot do it? They don't have a license in the first place to do so, so do you exclude them and they can't give away alcohol anymore? Is it just the bars? It's a big gray area. In the well, what you're saying is that in that case, it was you would have to enforce the open container law Correct. At that point, yeah, which puts a burden on the police force, I, my, yeah. my personal opinion. I mean, if you started an hour before and ended an hour after, I mean, it's not right. like that one hour somebody's going to sit down and chug a bottle of tequila and go kick somebody's window in. It don't work that way. I'd advocate for an hour before, an hour after. I mean, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Okay. I was, all right. Uh, we got something we can introduce then? I'll give y'all tacos. I don't care. I'm just saying I just want this thing to move. <laughs> yep. Right now, I'll go get a whole pile of <laughs> Bring a wheelbarrow full of tacos over here. <laughs> I don't think you can. Yeah. I'll take $24.99 <laughs> worth. I'll bring a buttload of tacos over here. All right. Uh, we've got a few minutes. Uh, questions for the budget. Mayor, did you have some uh, paper, some updated numbers to give us? Yes. And this is passive. Julie, if you can come up. Um, <coughs> this is, and I think I did email, I, I'm, I'm definitely for making a decision on the entertainment district, but I ask that that be put in January because we still haven't passed the budget. And um, now we have 10 minutes to discuss it for the council meeting. And I just, personally, I feel like this budget is not being put as a priority and extending it to January 18th that'll be four months into the fiscal year one-third of the year has gone by you have already said that yeah. it's a little confusing when comparing year to year every time we wait further into the year the numbers are skewed to, 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 to address that and I know you want it passed I mean and, and, I, and, I, and I, mean, I understand that Everybody but, wants it passed, well, not, not just me. Well, I know, I know Robert and I spent a considerable number of hours on it this week, and we just we, we tried to get it on there tonight. We just we just couldn't we couldn't get there. We were not but there. Y'all, neither one of y'all have called me. We have well. I don't have questions that I need explained to me. I understand what the requests are and why they've been requested. My my questions have more to do with okay. What, what can we do without? And so when you come back with it, I could give you a number and say, you know, you need to hit this number. Um, and well, I think that tonight you're going to see, because Xavier came in and really shed a big light on things, something that has been duplicated. And that is on the uh, transfer to capital projects, kind of in the middle of the page. Um, and the... 2017 figures you have one million nine hundred and two thousand five hundred yeah just about 1.9 million and in the uh, budget we duplicated that money because that's the money that was already in for 2017 and it's already been transferred so the reality is that's a huge deduction for um, the amount that's going from cash reserves it reduced it. the only amount that's now in capital projects is 173,000 and then when you come to the bottom under cash reserves 
cash reserves are eliminated. The other, the other thing that I was going to say, Mayor, was that if we, uh, it, just like we did in the last meeting, uh, I believe it was for um, the gas department, if there are items that are needed, we, we can also approve line items in, until we get there. So we're not completely stymied <coughs> in the city if we haven't passed the entire budget. If there's something that you've got to have between now and the next meeting, you can put it on the agenda. And we didn't deny any of those. They were all they were all approved. Uh, we didn't deny them on the agenda, nor did nor did we deny funding of any of them. So there is a process because anything is budgeted comes back to the council for final approval anyway. Um, so it's not that we can't move forward. But I, I think council, feel free to chime in here. I mean, but based on that information, do you understand how that changes everything? Mm -hmm. It changes some things, yep. It, it, it does. changes everything. I mean, because we've made additional cuts, um, which are reflected in, in this, and now you can see uh, the difference uh, in the budget 2017 and, and this budget, and then uh, there's no cash reserves. We, we have the amount of transfers required from utilities is substantially lower because it's not paying operating anymore that's on kind of on the bottom the city operating expenses i mean everything about this and xavier was you know kind of made it a lot easier to understand that this all this is is a presentation and it's a manual entry for a lot of this stuff but because a lot of these capital purchases and projects were and, and improvements were already in the 2017 budget. We already showed in the actual that it was already spent when it wasn't. So you can either add it now or th that way, but that right. can now be completely sure. deducted. So really, that cha that's a game changer. It is a big change. Anybody, anybody have any questions for the mayor? I, I had a now. question just on clarification, and I talked to the mayor about this earlier, and 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 I had brought it up to you, and I just want to bring it up again for everyone's clarification. But um, for the fire department, there were there was in the budget for a uh, quick attack truck, and in the budget for um, I guess redoing the chassis system on the, on the older truck. And you indicated that the quick attack truck it's already been ordered. has already been ordered, it just hasn't been paid and it for. just hasn't been paid for. That was something that was from last year. Right. We ordered it last year, but because the budget was six months in, right. by the time we ordered it, it wasn't delivered but, prior. But the to resolution it. to purchase that has already been passed too. Right. So right. effectively, but we're just showing actual though. Yeah. yeah. Right. You're showing. That's what I'm saying. We're, we're just you, we're giving y'all actual numbers, and, and that's what I'm saying. Is that's that 170 that, that really you could almost pull that out okay. of this right because you, you it's could, already I been I gave you the presentation that right. showed everything from 2000 she's just going to show actual those expenditures three years. in you can add fiscal those year 2018 you can either deduct them from 2018 or add them to 2017 but, but regardless when you do that the numbers end up being very equal but we're actually accomplishing a lot more in 2018 than we accomplished in 2017 I just don't think that's fine to approved to extend it but I think we could have a simple special meeting go over all these details and get it done I would like I would like to see us try to do that before the end of the year I would just think that'd be a good well, way to wrap up now you're talking Christmas week I, I, that's well a, that's true that's a lot to ask but we I'm not saying we can't I, I would just, I just keep hammering away at it we're, we're starting away at it I'm, I'm I think we're, we're we're a big step towards it, but I don't know. We might still be several hundred thousand dollars shy of where I think we need to be. But you're looking at it as a cutting expense instead of what it's going to produce or how we might have to pay for this somewhere else. Because again, this is just a sheet of paper. It's a tool. It's something I that I think we should look at again and, in a and, couple months. And and you know, as a living document. If revenues start exceeding projections, things can be added. Um, as, as opposed to, as opposed to banking on 
revenue and hoping for it, you know, we, we, we can always add things. The, Nothing would ever preclude us from adding things. Well, the, but the fact that we have waited 90 days, uh, and over 90 days if we even do it at the end of this year, this year we've already <coughs> saved, I wouldn't say saved because we haven't moved forward, what you're just ta what you're talking about because we're already a quarter into the year you see what i'm saying i mean this was proposed in september assuming so, that everything was fulfilled that was well, in th the this budget. is an this is an annual right from for 12 months so we're already going to save way more than the amount that you're talking about because the time frame that we're approving it and that would be in regards to what if every single capital expenditure was approved we wouldn't ultimately save it so you must be talking about labor it would be labor right. and some of some of these things the larger equipment in here in public works the uh, garbage trucks or leases three-year leases yeah and all right that's a question for you I'd like to see a justification for some of those leases because in, in some cases uh, you know, the argument can be made, we'll get a new vehicle or a new garbage truck or whatever every three years, but if you can get six or seven years out of a garbage truck and and the purchase price of that's well, somewhere between three and four years of lease, you don't get the benefit of that two or three years not having a payment on it. And that's what I'll, I'll have uh, have uh, Richard Johnson I'd like to talk see justifications to. Yeah, I mean, and those are things, like I said, we could have been talking about for three months. I don't know what your questions are because you're not asking me so I kind of have to forecast what your questions might be present them again Fair and I mean, it's it's been very time-consuming for enough. us okay. and I don't think based on this and, and that the, the new information that I'm giving you there's I can't imagine there being any expenses wise any problems now I appreciate your effort to the last couple weeks. Really Thank do. You. Thanks. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and adjourn, adjourn this meeting. We're going to start in about, take about a three-minute break. Get back to the council.